calling in the men who have scared more people than Boris Karloff and Bella Lugosi combined. Beautiful Bobby and Sweet Stan. The Midnight Express. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell, Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express are ready to take on the world. Let me tell you something. We are going to take on the world. We already have taken over the world. We're the world tag team champions. The hottest commodity in wrestling. It changed in that brief moment the entire face of professional wrestling. We beat the odds. We beat the system. We beat the unbeatable team. What you beat was a hasty retreat, brother. And in that same self-same instant, beautiful Bobby and Sweet Sam became recognized. We got the proof, brother. It ain't bragging. It's fact. We're the number one tag team in professional wrestling. Don't come after us, brother, because we'll put you in the ground like a stake and make you two feet tall instead of the four feet six you are right now. Let me tell you something else while we're at it. I'll give you something to share, brother. The Midnight Express, if you can clip their wings, you're doing something because we're the hottest thing going today. Like it's so often said, the 1988 poster boy for Alzheimer's disease, I heard you say that you're going to redeem yourself at my expense. Well, brother, the only thing that's going to redeem is going to be some of those F.J. screen steps he's been saving up. Get him a lawn chair for his old age, which began in 1957. So you are a victim of sour grapes, brother. You're a sore loser, just like all the losers are. But when it comes to the Midnight Express, that's all we wrestlers, losers, because can't nobody beat us. This is unheard of. This has never before been done. Never before even been attempted. All these championships, all these honors, and all these accolades. And whether you like the Midnight Express or not, the one thing you, yeah, you love the Midnight Express, but we love the Midnight Express too. And we don't care who else does, because we're out for ourselves. And we're out for one thing only, and that's to keep this glory. And whether you like it or not, you've now got to admit, what I've been saying all along is the truth, because we got the proof. We're the number one tag team in professional wrestling, and everybody else is playing catch up now. It's been too long since we started saying that we were the best, that everybody's been doubting. Everybody's been saying, Cornette, you're just going off. It ain't true. Well, now, finally, no matter where you are in the world, even your little peeper and that little weasel face of yours has to admit that we are the best of all time. We are number one. We're on top of the heat. And the only thing that's going to make it even sweeter, baby, is when we get all these commercials and all these endorsements that are coming up. And all, most of all, when we go home and my mother says, Jimmy, you done a good job. And Bobby and Stan, I always knew you could do it. You jump on Bobby Eaton, you think that's gonna do the job? Intimidate, scare the Midnight Express, uh-uh, brother. Cause we don't intimidate by you punks or anybody else. Cause we've been doing the same thing you've been doing for years, and we know exactly what we are doing. We did it the few, remember we called him over here with a steel chair, he went to the hospital with a concussion for a brain scan. We burned all the hide off to guard him for life and sent him to the hospital. And when you won the World Tag Team title, it was these men right here. So you ain't got nothing on us. When we jump on somebody, they say jump that brother. That's exactly where we're jumping. And you can clap and you can scream if you want to, but just like I said before, you people out there in TV land, you don't know what you want, but we know what we want, and it's the World Tag Team title. You said the Midnight Express are just like that dog that chases the Mercedes until one day the car taps them and knocks them in a ditch, and they go back to what they're doing best, squatting on fire hydrants. Well, let me tell you something right now. The Midnight Express could do the, what a dog does to a fire hydrant, and it'd be the first time in their lives they ever look or smell like men, brother. Since you got out alive, you've been making noises about these, brother. The United States Tag Team Championship belt. Well, I got news for you. We may not be able to get rid of you because you're so stupid you don't know where you've been beat. But we dead gum sure can keep these belts away from you because you're not good enough to beat the Midnight Express in the ring, flat in the middle, and never have been. I got the baddest tag team in the world. I got the baddest man in the world. You better be there every night, brother, with cash money because I'm going to have my mother's butler first and down there personally every night to cart those money bags off on his back. And let me tell you one thing, last year, you cheated my man Big Bub out of the final. Everybody knew he should have won it because he won the most money. Not the most events, but the most money. And that's what everybody's after is money. I know you're an expert on everything. It smells like a horse. We got a few surprises for you. And I understand you got
got that United States that United States heavyweight title belt around your waist now. Will the United States tag team champions being the all-American boys that they are, being the American dream that they are. They're the American dream to grow up looking good, grow up winning belts and titles and money. That's what the American dream is. And either one of beautiful Bobby or Sweet Stands might just challenge you for that U.S. heavyweight belt that you got around your waist so proudly from Starcade. Beautiful Bobby, I think, would take it. Sweet Stan, I think, would take it. We might have to just flip a coin to see who gets the honor of whipping your you-know-what and taking that gold away from you. And Big Bubba Rogers, the only man in the world that can strap a bucket of fried chicken on his back and ride a motor scooter across Ethiopia, he's going to win the bunkhouse stampede, brother. Well, let me say this to you. Sure, we can take a pen and write down the word scaffold and stop people flies away and he don't care. We've hated you for a long time, just like you've hated us. It's been five long years, you see. And we have loved beating you up. And we have enjoyed the heck out of putting you in the hospital. But we've never had homicide on our minds until now. But you corner somebody, you back somebody back up against a wall, and they've got to strike out. If somebody's walking down the street and somebody jumps them and there's nobody around to help and a brick or a rock or a ball peen hammer finds its way into your hand, brother, you're going to use it because it's them or it's you. Well, this is the situation. This is the decision you're forced us to make. It's you or us. I hope you realize the decision that we are going to make. If you give us a decision of you or us, then, brother, you ain't going to make it. I promise you that. A ball from 20 feet can hurt you. A ball from 20 feet can even kill you. And if you think for one second that we wouldn't push you off that thing, that we wouldn't throw you off that thing, that if you are clinging from your fingertips, hanging on for dear life with sweat beating up on your forehead, looking down at a space 20 feet down to that ring, if you think that we wouldn't kick you in the head, or stomp those fingers, or poke you in the eye and send you on your way down to that mat, or down to that concrete floor, then brother, you better bet your life on it, because that's exactly what you're doing, bet your life, when you climb that scaffold, you better make sure the shoes of your boots aren't slippery, you better make sure that you don't make any wrong steps, you better make sure that you ain't going to lose your balance, because if you do, you're going to fall 20 feet, and you ask me, I know what it feels like to fall 20 feet, you better hope and pray that music can save your mortal soul, because it will be the day the music dies.